เอทังสันทังเอทังปนิทังยาดีดังสัพบสังขารสมาโตชาบูพาดีปฏินิสสโกทันหักขายโอวิรากโนิโรดโนิบานัง This is peaceful. This is excellent, namely the stilling of all sankara, the relinquishment of all assets, the destruction of craving. Detachment, cessation, nirvana. Namaste. So, you've all heard the verse in the introduction, <laughs> in my cheesy country and western version. Uh, you didn't know the Buddha was into country and western, did you? <laughs> That's all you hear here. Anyway, I cast it in that. Style, deliberately, because I want to show something about Buddha's teaching that most people don't seem to really get. It's down home. It's simple. It's easy. It's approachable. Huh? The people who teach Buddhism like to make it seem very complicated, very difficult. Hard to realize, and so on, like that. Of course, it's their job security, right? <laughs> If you need them to interpret it for you, because it's so hard to understand. It's not hard to understand at all. Huh? A tang san tang. This is peaceful. A tang pani tang. This is excellent. Huh? Yadi dam. What is that? Saba sankara samato. Samato means to to still something, and sankara is actually the focus of this whole series. So saba sankara, stilling of all sankara. This is the difficulty that people don't understand the meaning. Of sankara, I don't think it's any exaggeration to say, if people understood the meaning, the actual in intention of this one verse, that they would very easily attain enlightenment, and certainly they would understand the Buddha's teaching. So, let's look into this. Let's look into this verse, and let's approach it from the character of the Buddha's teaching itself. The Buddha described his own teaching very nicely in six words. He said, "There are these six qualities of this Dhamma, his teaching." Svakato. It's well preached. There are thousands of suttas, uh, and the same truths are examined from every which way, different angles, different contexts. I mean, if you read through the actual suttas, not somebody's interpretation, not somebody's commentary. Uh, they're online; you can find them easily. Read the actual sutras, then you will get the right idea about the Buddha's teaching from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Sanditiko. It can be seen here and now in this very world. It's not something in the future. It's not something in the past. It's here and now. It is the reality. It is the way things are. So the Buddha's teaching is not meant as an academic exercise huh? to show off your flashy intellect. It's to show 
the nature of reality here and now, and to let us realize that for ourselves. Next is akaliko. It is timeless and immediate. Akaliko means literally timeless. But it doesn't mean that in the sense that we would say a timeless classic or something like that, meaning uh, that it's good in the past, present, and the future. That's true about the Dhamma. But the real meaning of akaliko is immediate. If you get it, it doesn't take any time at all to be effective. I think this is the biggest misunderstanding that people have about the Buddhist teaching. They think that it's some long, you know, difficult slog. <laughs> but if you practice it rightly, if you practice correctly and intensely, you can get it very quickly. The Secret of the Golden Flower which is probably the most popular series on this channel, comes from Chinese Buddhism. And it says, if you do this practice for a hundred days, you will attain the enlightenment, permanent, irreversible enlightenment. But what does it mean, do this practice? Here's the fine print. <laughs> Here's the catch. You have to meditate 8, 10, 12 hours a day for those 100 days. Basically, do nothing else. And this is where everybody misses. Well, people will go on a meditation retreat and they'll practice 8 hours a day for a week. <laughs> a week is not enough. Uh, 100 days. What is that? About... Eight weeks? Oh, I got some bugs crawling on me. Okay. A hundred days. That's not much. Maybe three months, huh? Every day, day in, day out, for a hundred days. So this is where people mess up. Or they practice one hour a day, two hours a day. For a hundred days and say, well, why didn't anything happen? <laughs> One hour a day is hardly long enough to get your butt warmed up, okay? <laughs> to really get into your seat takes at least, I would say, four hours a day practice for a good two weeks. Just to get into your seat, to get your sitting posture right so that it's effortless and comfortable. Oh, yeah, your feet are going to go to sleep. Get used to it. <laughs> but they always wake up again, you know? So the problem is people are not doing the practice intensively enough. Or they're doing it as a part of some group. And the Buddha never said, you can't find it anywhere in the suttas where the Buddha said, Go with a group and sit down and meditate. He never says that. But in hundreds of places in the suttas, you'll find go alone to the shade of a great tree or an abandoned building or the forest or any lonely place and sit and inquire into it until you get it. So that's the actual instruction of the Buddha. And if you don't read the suttas, you won't know these things. So anyway, ehi pasiko. Ehi pasiko means it invites you to come and see. Come and see for yourself. Don't just believe me or any other teacher, even the Buddha himself. Uh, he says this in the Kam, uh, Kalama Sutta. Don't believe it just because I say it and you think I'm some kind of authority or something. No. Come and see. E pasico. Try it. Find out for yourself. That's the only way you're going to get the benefit anyway. And then you will know. 
One more thing. Opanayiko. Opanayiko. It leads one on. Huh? The uh, head monk in a monastery is called Nayaka. Bhante Nayaka or Nayaka Tero. Nayaka means leader. And so Opanayaka is that which leads one. Huh? It gives you a goal. It gives you a process. It gives you a set of instructions how to do it. And it goes step by step from right view all the way to right enlightenment, the Eightfold Noble Path. And finally, the Buddha's teaching is Pachatang Veditabo Vinyuhi. It can be realized directly by the wise, not by idiots. <laughs> what is a wise person? A wise person is one who follows the instructions of the enlightened ones. That's really what a wise person is, isn't it? So, if you are wise, if you follow the instructions of the enlightened ones, which almost nobody does, huh? you'll get it. You'll realize it in the here and now, not in some future life, huh? not when you're old. <laughs> right here, right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, doesn't matter. And then you'll get the benefit. And what is the benefit? Nibbana. So the verse under discussion tells us about Nibbana. And our aim, our intention in this series is to show you exactly how to understand this teaching, which is given in this one verse. Huh? Etam santam, etam panitam. And apply it in your own life so that you get the benefit too. See, what's the use of having something which is just a theory? Uh, this Buddhism. Ism means basically a theory. So you have Catholicism, Protestantism, Hinduism, huh? this ism, that ism. And they're all different theories. But they don't, it's like the pills that mother gives you, they don't do anything at all. They're just words. So the last thing the world needs is more isms. So this is not an ism. I categorically reject. Buddhism because it's somebody's interpretation it's not realizable in the here and now it's not open to anyone to come and realize it it doesn't lead one on except to more and more dependence on some authorities and see that's the whole difference between religion and actual transcendental knowledge People are afraid, especially the religious authorities are afraid of actual realized knowledge because it will make you completely independent of their authority. That means they lose their jobs. <laughs> so for their own job security, they are mucking up the whole teaching and making it seem much more difficult and trying to get you dependent on them. Huh? Whereas actually, the aim of the teaching is the complete opposite, to get you independent, to get you capable of operating completely on your own, with your own direct connection to the truth. See, that's the real Buddha's teaching. And that's why I brought up these six qualities. What are they again? Svakato. Very well preached in detail. Sanditiko can be seen here and now in this very world. Akaliko, timeless 
and immediate in its effect. E pasico, it invites one to come and see. Come see for yourself. Openaiko, it leads one on to Nibbana. And Pachatang Veditabo Vinyuhi can be realized for oneself by the wise. So be wise. Huh? Directly realize this teaching. You don't really need anything except a quiet place to practice. And of course, you have to free up your time. That's why we're talking about stilling the sankharas. Huh? Because the sankhara is a promise, a commitment that you make to be or become something. You can make it to yourself or you can make it to others. So we're all entangled in so many sankharas. And that's why we think we have no time. We sold out. All our time is booked up. We have to be able to relax and still those sankharas. Because the sankhara is a movement. It's a desire and a movement in a certain direction of being. Being or becoming. Becoming means change, movement. Stopping one type of being and starting another type of being. So we want to stop all of those. We want to stop all movement, all change. Let go of this uh, promise to become something or be something for ourselves or for somebody else. And just stop being <laughs> and then see who we are, what we are. Because the problem is we have added all these unnecessary artificial things. So much so that we have covered up our real being. We don't really know who we are anymore. That's why Ramana Maharshi always used to ask, Who are you? Who am I? What am I? Whence am I? Where have I come from? Whither am I? Where am I going? If we investigate these things, huh? not just take some teaching out of some book, but actually look into it within ourselves. We find that what we are is a collection of artificial things, of ideas and symbols and ways of being that we have picked up from other people. In a word, we're inauthentic. And we started inquiring in this vein of thinking all the way back in one of our first series, Being in the World. If you go back and look at that, you'll see this train of thought is already there. That why should we accept so many designations, labels, categorizations, identities, purposes, desires, obligations, and so on from the outside? What can they possibly have to do with who we are? So this was the point in even in existentialism. The existentialists took it quite far, but they couldn't take it beyond the idea of that we should determine our own agendas because they could not go beyond the idea of the empirical self. But Buddha has. <laughs> Ramana Maharshi has. Uh, the greatest Advaitins, the greatest Buddha, uh, has gone beyond this idea of an individual personality, an individual self. And this is the secret to real enlightenment. This separate self, this ego, this I, has to be given up. And that you become so much happier. <laughs> in my own practice, after two weeks here in the forest, 
where all this I stuff used to be. Now there's just a big quiet space. Uh, and I'm feeling so much lighter, so much happier. So you can also do this. You can also experience this release from the bindings and the weight, uh, the, the ball and chain of the ego. That's real enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.